The virtual Fast Track Cities 2020 conference convened more than 1,400 delegates from over 410 cities and municipalities worldwide. Under a new normal, they met virtually in a tumultuous year during which COVID-19 redefined global public health and demonstrated that defeating pandemics requires thinking globally, but acting locally. Today, in the midst of our current public health crisis with COVID-19, we see clearly the necessity for cities and municipalities to be on the forefront of advancing public health and basic human rights. It is no longer acceptable to relegate urban leaders to the sidelines as a mere afterthought in health diplomacy and then expect them to play a central role in preventing and containing epidemics or pandemics. This has been true for decades with epidemics such as HIV and TB. Today, it's coming to even sharper focus with COVID-19. Framing the reason for the virtual Fast Track Cities 2020 conferences focus on COVID-19, Dr. Anthony Fauci from the U.S. National Institute of Health delivered a keynote address that defined the emerging pandemic and offered hope for future vaccines. I really appreciate the opportunity uh, to address you today. I'm going to be talking about the public health and scientific challenges of COVID-19. Obviously, I don't need to emphasize to this audience the importance of this topic right now, which has really essentially occupied the attention of the entire world over the last seven to eight months. The virus itself is referred to as SARS coronavirus 2. So where are we epidemiologically with this now global pandemic of historic proportions? There are close to 28 million cases and almost 900,000 deaths globally. So I would imagine that by the time we get to mid 2021, towards the end of 2021, there will be enough vaccine to vaccinate anyone who wants to be vaccinated in the United States. And certainly this will be shared through a variety of mechanisms with other countries throughout the world. Contextualizing the science of COVID-19, city multilateralism and COVID-19 responses was the focus of two high-level panels at the Virtual Fast Track Cities 2020 conference, co-moderated by the International Association of Providers of AIDS Care President and Lisbon, Portugal's mayor. The panel opened with elected officials from Atlanta and Etiquini reflecting on the urban COVID-19 epidemics. Mayor Medina, welcome to the virtual Fast Track Cities 2020 conference. As I noted uh, at the beginning of my opening remarks, I wish we were with you in Lisbon and we're hoping to be with you in Lisbon next year. Uh, I want to, to salute everyone that is attending this, um, this meeting. And mainly, uh, I would like to give a warm welcome to my colleagues, dear colleagues, uh, Mayor Kisha Bottoms from Atlanta and uh, Mayor Quanda from Etiqui Metropolitan Municipality. Thank you very much for, uh, for being with us. What we've seen in 2020 in Atlanta is that COVID-19 really has highlighted many of the discrepancies that still exist in one of the world's greatest cities in Atlanta. What it has highlighted for us is what it's highlighted across America and I would assume across the world, um, how communities of color are hit much harder um, when the unexpected happens. Uh, when it comes to multilateralism and the city preparedness to respond to this pandemic, we have of course uh, partnered with many strategic uh, stakeholders globally including C40, uh, that uh, is also part and the uh, fast track cities, which are part and parcel of our plans. So which has really made impact uh, to save lives uh, during this difficult period. We are also strengthening partnership with sister cities across the globe so that we can share and in the continent, we can share our experiences uh, so that we learn from one another because we believe that we can't do things on our own. And then certainly from a city perspective, as I mentioned, our chief health officer was to focus on HIV and AIDS rates in the city of Atlanta. But over the past few months, since March, well, actually since February, her sole focus has been on COVID-19. So this is certainly a concern that we have that very important 
health issues, lingering and chronic health issues that we find in our communities um, in Atlanta are, are, are being ignored because our attention, our focus and our resources are all uh, based on COVID right now. But what we know is that high blood pressure, diabetes, our HIV AIDS rates, cancer, all of these things still exist, uh, but we just aren't focusing on them and putting our resources and energy towards addressing them right now. Two additional elected officials from Johannesburg and Quezon City joined their Atlanta and Itekine colleagues to discuss efforts to mobilize their municipal governments to safeguard their constituents' health and well-being. Uh, on the 18th of March this year, President, His Excellency President Ramaphosa declared the national state of disaster, wherein we now uh, live under, under a state of disaster. As we speak, we're still under the national state of disaster as a response to the COVID pandemic. The numbers are that uh, we, uh, in our province, we've got uh, 213,000 confirmed cases as we speak. And in Johannesburg, the cases are sitting at 84,000. Um, this, this makes us an epicenter in our province and one of the highest uh, infection rates uh, in the country as, as We are the only city in the Philippines that has a stimulus package. We have allocated, well, it's not a lot, a lot of money, but it's, um, it is significant in our terms to small businesses, micro businesses that are going out of, of business uh, to be able to provide wage subsidies for their employees that are, em that are working in or, or that live in Quezon City. We will pay for their salaries for up to three months just to make sure that they don't close shop and just to make sure that their uh, employees employees continue to work and earn a living. The, the last pillar is called social mobilization and human solidarity. We realize that government alone, uh, especially the city government, cannot uh, fight the pandemic on its own. So we had to go into a united front with churches, uh, with religious bodies, with sports bodies, um, with uh, social uh, enterprises for facing this pandemic, fighting it together with our community. During, let's say, Independence Day, a lot of people wanted to rally uh, in the streets. And uh, um, the police came out, well, the national government came out with a directive that rallying was not allowed, using as an excuse um, that social gathering uh, is, is limited to only 10 persons. No? And I actually put out a statement saying that here in Quezon City, we will respect rallying and protesting, uh, which is your fundamental human right, uh, but you must practice the minimum health standards. I did that, no? but I was actually um, told that, I was actually told to, to take back my, uh, my uh, orders. And I can tell you that the compliance um, started increasing, the level of compliance started increasing. People started taking um, this regulation seriously because it was in their best interest. Um, but the alternative of what we did was to speak to them and say, look, we, we don't want to arrest you, but please comply. We find you again in the streets uh, during the lockdown. Uh, we will definitely um, take you in. The Commander-in-Chief, His Excellency, the President, uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, of course, mobilized the South African National Defense Force uh, because we, we treated coronavirus uh, as, a, as an enemy of, of, of the people. Political commitments in the face of monumental challenges that COVID-19 has posed for the cities was in full display at the virtual Fast Track Cities 2020 conference. So too was the best practices and innovation shared by key stakeholders across multiple Fast Track cities. New York City actually has, I think, twice the, um, the diagnosis rate um, or case rate of TB compared to the national average. Um, and it's heavily concentrated in our immigrant populations. And so um, we continue to maintain services, but at a reduced capacity. Um, much of those services have been shifted to telehealth um, with really only necessary um, appointments happening on site. The good news about that is that many people who are out of care actually return to care. They return to care through telemedicine, which I think is teaching us something about retaining people in care. There was a significant drop in STD clinic visits, but PrEP has been continued quite quite well. We have seen a significant drop though in HIV testing. We will need to evaluate the impact of COVID-19 pandemic in the HIV care in Mexico City in the short and long term because we do think the impact will be uh, tremendous.
First of all, uh, you have to know that uh, Italy was the first uh, um, uh, country, uh, European country, to be involved in the outbreak of COVID. We were totally unprepared because we didn't think that it would even happen. All the hospitals have rapidly converted into COVID hospitals. No more surgery department, no more uh, any kind of uh, particular department. Uh, all units were transformed into COVID, COVID departments. First, the hospitals uh, sent prescriptions by email. Second, uh, all prescriptions were exceptionally allowed to be used in pharmacies. And third, a teleconsultation was developed. However, uh, lockdown led to the closing of most uh, screening structures and uh, the number of HIV tests in Parisian labo laboratory uh, collapsed with a minus uh, 70, 75%. And also I would like to highlight the great engagement of civil society organization and community mobilization on COVID-19 prevention measures. Another lesson learned is about effective control of COVID-19 uh, uh, that requires much sectoral collaboration and partnership. And here really we experienced this uh, um, approach from a great collaboration between government, partners, civil society organization, and the general population. We had to design scenarios where we had to ensure safety first for patients and also for the healthcare workers. So healthcare workers, we had to provide the personal protective equipment, emphasize the physical distancing and also triage as well. And to reduce the risk of transmission uh, to patients, the facility screening and also isolation centers were set up in the uh, large facilities and also uh, emphasize minimizing contact with health facilities and we enhanced infection prevention control measures. In order to keep providing care to people living with HIV, uh, the following pillars of uninterrupted provision of HIV service are being observed, such as reinforced infection control measures and patient education, reduce patients' visits to health units for like um, three to six month ART delivery and six month appointments, implementation of the policies and operational norms of the HIV program in the best way in the context of national emergency. As far as the reorganization of testing and linkage strategies is concerned, there was an intensification of testing at all entry points with a high yield. Starter packs of uh, antiretrovirus were put at the disposal of doctors so that initiation could be done immediately uh, in their offices. As for people living with HIV, in order to reduce the number of unnecessary visits to the healthcare facilities, we implemented differentiated services delivery. The poster on the right is the new and simple differentiated services delivery guidelines from Ministry of Public Health. And we keep the healthcare uh, workers up to date with the guidelines and maintain the quality of HIV services using the virtual sessions. Previously, appointments had to be monthly based with your doctor and, and now doctors are allowed to write, write longer scripts. So that's been a definite benefit and it's challenged that ongoing myth that drug users can't be trusted. Um, we've solved home, homelessness currently. Uh, all homeless people in Melbourne have been housed since April uh, to prevent the spread of the virus. Uh, that has created a bit of an issue for government as they didn't have an exit strategy when they put everyone into hotels. Um, but we're all hoping that, you know, we have proven now that homelessness is solvable. And uh, we continue static HIV testing, although many facilities had reduced clinic hours or assumed key roles as COVID-19 treatment facilities, and we prioritize two, month, two months ARV dispensing and home-based ARV delivery system services. Grounding the Virtual Fast Track Cities 2020 conference was a recognition that the COVID-19 pandemic has disrupted HIV responses, but also that there are valuable lessons to be learned from the past year and critical work ahead to regain momentum against HIV. We find ourselves challenged to help people stay on treatment and in care, especially in these COVID-19 times, as resources are now splintered and in a sense cannibalized by other competing needs. And we anticipate losing gains as a sector 
uh, in HIV over the next few years. A major part of the answer is really community based healthcare. The, the answer is right before us. This one moment in time when we've got these two epidemics, gosh, uh, there's a lot to be learned, leveraged and built forward from what we've done for HIV. Whether it is uh, folks who are part of the HIV leadership for years are being asked to step into national and subnational COVID leadership, city level COVID leadership. Um, and we wanna make sure that we can do that while we're still adapting and compensating with our HIV services so that we don't only respond to COVID-19 and leave HIV behind. Um, and we really hope that what we're learning from HIV and COVID-19 together can also help us see our way to that future system for health that perhaps is more agile, uh, more results driven, and more multi-sectoral to really take care of the needs for people. Colleagues and friends, today more than ever, I am convinced that Fast Track Cities are leaders in the city multilateralism movement. You are key to getting us through the COVID-19 pandemic, ending the HIV, TB, and viral hepatitis epidemics, and confronting future public health challenges.